Formations are an important part of this game system. There is no command hierarchy and there is not an ability to attach units between formations or reattaching. There is none of that to be concerned with here. What we have here are formations and uh, we're looking at the Barbarossa 41 scenario in the classic folder and you'll notice that when you click on a unit it will highlight the other units that are in that same formation. If this isn't happening you can get that up here in the options drop down under formation highlight you have the ability to toggle between that being on or off. So you'll want to know a couple things about these formations and you can check out the formation box by clicking on a button over here or hit F on the keyboard, F for formation. And you'll see here it'll show you all the units that are contained in that formation, where they are, and if they're not on the map, when they're coming in. They could also arrive by an event, which will usually have a question mark after it. And uh, the other things we want to know here are the characteristics of each formation. This particular one has a proficiency of 85%. Now the formation proficiencies will vary of course depending on what the scenario designer's intentions are. It could be anywhere from 1% to 100%. The higher the percentage, the more efficient or more proficient, if you want to put it that way, the formation will be. The other setting here is the supply setting of 65% in this case. Again, it could be anywhere from 1% to 100%. We covered this in the supply tutorial. Uh, this is the percentage of the overall supply that this formation will deliver to its units in a best case situation. So it's a good idea when you start a scenario to, to uh, flip through a couple and see what you've got to work with. See what your proficiencies are, what your supply ratings are. Um, most of them like uh, in this case on the German side are going to be similar 80% and 65% for that formation 75% 65% they're all fairly similar if you get to some other countries Hungarian formations for example proficiency of 50% supply level of 30% it's pretty low and you can imagine that this particular formation would perform quite a bit less than the German formations would, being at 50% compared to around 80, 85, 75 of the Germans and their supply delivery, only 30% of what the maximum possible is. Uh, we'll take a look at the Romanian formation here, same thing, proficiency 50, supply 30. These formations, as you can imagine, it makes common sense. They're not going to perform very well, they're not going to get supplies very well, you're not going to be able to do a whole lot with them, although throughout the course of scenarios you don't really notice a lot of these things they're subtle as you're going about your business making your moves and completing your turns so it's a good idea to like I said at the beginning of a scenario flip through the formations and see what you've got to work with so you're familiar when you start up now the other thing you want to look at in the formations are their support levels and that's support scope right here and this one is set to army support you just want to be familiar with this. You don't have to memorize these things, but it should be fairly easy to grasp once you've run through a scenario a couple turns and flip through a couple of these formation boxes to see what you're dealing with. There's four levels of support, and you can see them in the manual. Uh, section 8.6 explains all that. You can see right here it tells you the four levels. Internal, Army, Force, and Free. Internal is the worst. Army is a little better. Force is better than Army and free support is the best level. You want to be aware as you go through playing a scenario what your support scope levels are because they could have an effect as to your, what's going on. And these effects aren't reported to you in any way. They take place behind the scenes. So what you're concerned with will be mixing formations. If you're setting up attacks using only units within the same formation you don't have to worry about anything units within a formation will cooperate within themselves no matter what the support setting is but if you're setting up attacks between different formations including different formations you could run into some subtle penalties there 
Now, if you're the type of player that doesn't particularly pay attention to formations and mixes and matches everything, no need to freak out because you can still do that if you want to. You just have to be aware that there could be some subtle penalties going on that you're not seeing. And this would manifest itself in some attacks maybe not working out the way you would think. When you're looking at what you have set up and you hit execute and the attack goes in and it doesn't work out the way you thought, take a look at your cooperation levels and how you're mixing your formations because that could be it. Another thing that happens a lot, uh, or rather another thing that happens and it's caused a lot by mixed formations is the turn burn aspect. Uh, running up more tactical rounds than what you expected. And that is most often attributed to mixing formations that aren't cooperative and it's causing things to go on behind the scenes that you're not aware of and then you sit here and scratch your head and wonder what happened. That could very well be it. And uh, in this case you have a lot of German formations that are set to army support we can see. Um, internal support would be the worst level. Army support is the next step up. So it's not too bad. It's not the greatest thing. Uh, you have to play the scenario in each scenario to see what the effects will be. Uh, and, and in this case, uh, if you look at, say, for example, the uh, Hungarian formation, they're set to internal support. They only want to cooperate with units within their own formation. You can certainly set up an attack with units from other formations to join in with them, but there could be some subtle effects going on there. So in order to maximize what you're doing, you want to be aware of these force levels. Now if at this point you're a little bit confused or not exactly sure what we're talking about here, you might want to take a minute to look at that manual section in the manual. That was uh, 8.6 I believe. Yes, 8.6 for formation characteristics and effects. Take a look at that again. And uh, because the next part I'm going to get to, if you don't have it right now, I'm only going to make it a heck of a lot worse on you with this next part. So make sure you, you've got this idea of these four levels, internal being the worst, three being the best. You've got two levels in between, causing a lot of subtle things going on in combat. Because the next thing we want to look at, you'll notice in these descriptions it's talking about unit colors, icon colors and so forth. So we'll take a look at the Operation Blue scenario, Operation Blau 1942, which is in the World War II East Front folder. And you'll notice here on the German side we've got units of all kinds of different colors. Now on the one hand a scenario designer can make different colored units because that's what they like to do. They like particular colors for a certain side and that's the only effect that they want to have on a scenario. On the other hand, the unit colors tie right into support levels. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. I'm going to scroll down here to this part and see that we have different formations here that are being highlighted as I click on each unit. And all of these different formations have units that are the same exact color. We'll take a look at their support scope which is force, which is the third level, a little bit less than free support, better than internal and army. This one, force support. We'll go to the next one, force support. We'll go to the next one, force support. Okay, they're all on force support, we get that. They're all the same colors. It's best when you're making combats and setting up combats to stay within a formation, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. You just have to know that there could be some subtle like I said, subtle penalties in the combats that could cause things to not work out the way you want it to. In this case, these formations are set to force support and they're the same exact color. That's pretty good. Now you move over here and you'll have, you'll notice different color units in, the, in these formations. They're also set to force support. It doesn't preclude them from cooperating with these other units that are different colors and different formations, but because they're a different color, they're going to be cooperating a little bit less than these units would cooperate with each other. You see, different colors affects that cooperation level behind the scenes. It doesn't tell you, there's no combat report that's going to tell you any of that. You just need to know what your levels are and what the colors are. So in this case, we can assume that this scenario designer decided that 
he wanted this, all these formations to be of this one army uh, corps, 12th corps, and that they should cooperate with themselves pretty good. But if you go outside of that corps to this corps, which is 35th corps, they're not going to be so easy to cooperate. Let's take a look at some other ones. Um, I want to look at the uh, a Romanian corps here, set to internal support. So this Romanian formation set to internal support is only going to cooperate well with units within its own formation. Because it's the same color as another formation that we see down here, which is also set to internal support, it may also cooperate with that formation, but it's not going to cooperate so well with these other formations, especially because they're totally different colors. Now this doesn't mean that if you set up an attack that the attack isn't going to happen. You can attack with whatever units you want to, and that attack is going to go off. But how that attack works out is directly affected by these support levels and these unit colors. Let me go up to the top part of the map here, and I'll show you one more example where we have formations up here that are all the same color. Force support you'll see for this one, and force support you'll see for this one. So in this case, same exact colors set to a fairly high level of support. It's probably not a bad idea if you want to or you need to set up attacks with units from these two formations on the same hex. But if we look at this other formation here, it's set to internal support. I don't know why that is in this particular scenario, but at any rate, this formation, even though it's the same color as the other two, if you set up attacks with units from mixing these formations, you could end up with, like we said, these subtle differences that can cause the combats not to work out as well as you thought and may burn more rounds, more tactical rounds, than you had expected. Also, near the back of the manual in the scenario design section, there's a, a section on this support and cooperation levels that gives you a chart for a visual aid uh, if that helps you out if you're still confused. You really only need to keep two things in mind. What your formation support scope levels are between formations and what the colors are. Once you get that idea going in your head, your combats that you set up should work out a lot better and you'll be a lot better at getting optimum results out of your tactical rounds.